For Complex News, I'm Hadamon Welsh, and if you're watching this, there's probably more than a good chance you own a gaming console. A Switch, a PS4, an Xbox One, whatever. Demographically speaking, you, dear viewer, are probably getting into 2K, Apex Legends, or Call of Duty before the day is done. And if you're a console owner, there's also a good chance that you're purchasing more and more of your games digitally. And if you haven't noticed, well, the giant tech companies who are looking to get into the gaming space certainly have. In recent months, Google, Apple, and Amazon have all announced plans to, and forgive me for using this word, disrupt the gaming space and put an end to the big three's dominance of Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. So what exactly does the future of gaming look like? Well, if Silicon Valley has anything to say about it, it's streaming. Netflix-style subscription-based services where physical media is abandoned nearly altogether is how the battle lines seem to be being drawn. But the big three certainly aren't going down without a fight. Just this week, Sony let out a very tentative reveal of the specs of the already in production PS5. Mark Cerny, the lead system architect for the PS4, sat down with Wired to discuss details about Sony's next-gen release. Unlike the PS4 Pro, which was just a buff refresh of the original, the upcoming iteration will boast significant upgrades including graphical capabilities that were never achievable on a gaming console. This is thanks to an 8-core CPU based on AMD's 3rd-gen Ryzen chip and a custom GPU based on AMD's Radeon Navi graphics card, powerful enough to rival any PC. Cerny also asserted that a large amount of focus is being placed on the audio experience for the next PlayStation. As a gamer, it's been a little bit of a frustration that audio did not change too much between PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. With the next console, the dream is to show how dramatically different the audio experience can be when we apply significant amounts of hardware horsepower to support it. That dream will also include a custom 3D audio unit which will be embedded in the GPU alongside 8K resolution support, future-proofing the device. The new console will also be backwards compatible with PS4 titles. The hard drives will be replaced with faster SSDs, meaning sluggish loading screens may soon become a thing of the past. And what about Microsoft for all you Xbox devotees? Earlier this week, Microsoft also announced a diskless version of the Xbox called the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, which is identical to the current Xbox One S console, except for a lack of a physical drive. Due out May 7th, Microsoft hopes the lower price point will also appeal to people who have grown up without discs. So will physical media ever go the way of R. Kelly's musical career? Probably not, but there's a good chance that cloud-based streaming services may become unavoidable, especially if Amazon has anything to say about it. Not long after the company acquired the streaming platform Twitch, rumors began surfacing that Amazon was developing a console all of its own. Earlier this year, the information reported that Amazon is currently working on a cloud gaming service with a targeted launch as soon as 2020. Two independent sources said that such a service from Amazon is on the way. The Verge also dug up two job listings in Seattle and California. The listings show that Amazon is looking to hire two engineers to work on cloud games, while a third posting for a lead cross-platform game engineer only further fans the flames. This is a rare opportunity to take a technical leadership role to shape the foundation of an unannounced AAA games business. That's what the posting Red. Amazon has already invested a huge amount of money in the gaming industry with Twitch, the leading platform for video game streaming. Adding integrated cloud-based gaming into their portfolio seems like a smart choice, allowing consumers to sample some of the latest games without download times or having to purchase expensive hardware. Google dominated the Games Developer Conference earlier this year when they too announced a streaming video game service called Stadia that was big on promises and extremely light on details. Former Sony and Xbox executive and current Google gaming boss Phil Harrison detailed the platform boasting high-end games capable of running in 4K and 60 frames per second streamed across Google's network to any screen you can think of. Harrison said, quote, This new generation of gaming is not a box. Stadia will launch later this year, first in the US, Canada, the UK, and Europe, but the immediate and most crucial concern had to do with the complete omission of just how fast users' internet speeds would need to be to get the sky-high performance hyped throughout the entire event, let alone to enjoy multiplayer games that run entirely via streaming. And that's really the f***ing rub here. Internet infrastructure in the US is largely a joke made up of an oligopoly of four internet providers that have all agreed to keep prices high and quality just shitty enough that you can still log on without too much lag. A joke compared to a country like South Korea. And what tech giant dick swinging contest wouldn't be complete without an offering from Apple? 
Last month, Apple held a special event to further detail their Apple TV shows in the pipeline while also dedicating a huge chunk of time to their new subscription-based gaming service, Apple Arcade. As detailed during the event, the service will arrive with over 100 new and exclusive games. It's currently set to launch sometime this fall, although they did not detail the pricing model. While it was previously reported that Apple was investing over a billion dollars in their TV and news subscription services, the figure for Apple Arcade allegedly sits somewhere near the half billion dollar mark. Still, a ton of money. That budget will be spent on acquiring new games for the service before its launch in over 150 countries. Although it's not clear how many of these games they're investing in will remain exclusive to Apple's service. Regardless, Apple Arcade will offer customers the ability to download and play as many games as they want across all of their devices. It has also been indicated that Apple has been offering developers incentives if they go exclusive to Apple Arcade, at least during the launch window. In the past, gamers were forced with a binary choice of the ease and convenience of console gaming or the more involved but modular upgradable PC gaming experience. Now the future looks to fragment that binary depending, of course, on your upload and download speeds. Personally, and this is just old head energy here, I like to own the things that I buy. If I'm gonna drop $70 on a title, I don't want it to be somewhere in the cloud that is completely susceptible to ISPs going down, clouds crashing, or any other host of problems that could make sure that my game is not in my possession. Let us know what you think, and for everything else, subscribe to Complex on YouTube. For Complex News, I'm Hanuman Welch.